in late spring of 2013, we'd been contacted by the state and LSU about assuming operational control and ownership of the two hospitals in uh, North Louisiana, the ones in Shreveport and Monroe. And uh, at that particular time, no one else was willing to assume that challenge. So the BRS stepped up and uh, undertook that. And then 135 short days, we restructured all the hospital departments and all the classification of all the employees. And then at midnight on October 1st of 2013, University Health was born. And we didn't miss any paychecks. There was no delays at all in patient care. And we just kept right on going from then. So we were afraid that they may uh, take the stance to close the hospital up here. And we knew there wasn't uh, enough money to fund us uh, at the same rate as the other hospitals at the time. Um, we didn't know how much or how little that was, and, but we decided that uh, with the encouragement of LSU that this is what they wanted to do and we were here to serve them and so we stepped up and said we would take on the challenge of uh, separating the hospital and the med school and keeping the hospital running. John George had the vision. He was the one who initially said, we can do this. Uh, he thought that we could do it because he had prior hospital experience. Uh, he had owned a hospital. He's also a medical doctor. And um, uh, he knew the challenges that we would face, but he also understood the opportunities uh, that this hospital, you know, we could improve it, we could make it better. And so from the very beginning, he was a bull. And uh, he has guided us through this along with Steve from the very beginning. We were the last man standing. Uh, those candidates who considered uh, for different business and uh, economic reasons uh, stepped aside from the opportunity. Uh, we realized if we didn't take it over, uh, it was quite possible that the management and stewardship of that hospital would pass to people located outside of Louisiana. We understood that it would be a real challenge to do that. And uh, the reason is because we were taking over a hospital and almost starting from scratch because as you know, uh, all of the employees were, at that time, uh, employees of the state of Louisiana. So that was gonna be terminated, and we had to come on and make them all as our employees and purchasing and everything else. So it was really a massive undertaking. BRF didn't get into it to make money. It got in it to protect 3,500 jobs, to ensure the provision of medical care to the, uh, to the community, to support graduate medical education by people who had a passion about the community rather than someone in Tennessee or someone in Austin, Texas or Dallas, Texas. Uh, just people who care. Waiting lists, uh, waiting at times at, uh, oh, at times, I, I saw numbers where there were like 15,000 patients uh, in 2013 that were waiting for basic imaging. Uh, that backlog now, and it's not really a backlog, but we have, you know, less than a thousand that are that are uh, awaiting a particular appointment, and we do, we do, thousands and thousands of imaging studies in an organization, particularly in healthcare. If you're not growing, then you're you're moving the wrong direction, and every service, every industry that we look at in the organization indicates that we are providing uh, more health care uh, for the people of northern Louisiana than ever before at both uh, hospitals. And that growth uh, has been sustained. Uh, and what it has uh, led to is our ability to care for patients that otherwise would have no other source of care. The, the people really made the change and the transformation of making the hospital a service-oriented organization. Initially, the BRF told us that they would reinvest in the hospital. And that's exactly what they've done. They've reinvested in the hospital. So what that does is that proves their integrity and makes their word valid. And the staff has held on to that. Actually investing in the hospital, as far as getting us new equipment, as far as investing in the staff, just making, making investments into the hospital, such as the brand new linear accelerator in radiation oncology, which actually puts us in the ranks with MD Anderson and the other big oncology areas. Uh, we've also done great renovations as far as the lobby. We've done great renovations as far as the nursing stations on the floors. We've actually remodeled all but two, and that is to make it nurse, patient, visitor friendly. 
we've invested in employees as far as paying for them to get their certifications, reimbursements for their education. We've done that. I think it transitioned our employees who remained here with University Health were re-energized. They have always been very engaged and committed to our mission here at University Health Conway. But when they saw us growing and developing these new service lines and providing additional services, they were energized again. Um, they take great pride in the work that they do and the care that we provide to our patients. We were able to actually bring back some of the services that we lost back in our state days when budget cuts got the best of us. Um, we were able to bring back orthopedics, urology, and neurology. We also added some additional new service lines in. We brought on cardiology. We also have interventional cardiology services. That was such a great day for us when we were able to open up our first cath lab. Um, we were actually able to provide services for our patients here in this region that otherwise possibly were had to travel over 150 miles sometimes just to get those cardiology services. I was just uh, stunned uh, at the sense of pride and ownership that the people of University Health have for this system. Some have criticized that we didn't have any experience in the hospital management system and we simply purchased that expertise because we didn't have it. Uh, we, have, we have incredible records of accomplishment. It's just been remarkable to me to see the implementation of clinical service lines, to see the outcomes of care, infection rates, mortality rates, different ways that we measure quality, clinical quality, uh, just continue to move absolutely in the right direction. Far, far uh, superior to what uh, was going on in 2013. Uh, the one thing uh, that BRF has managed to be able to do is to provide consistent, high quality, exceptional health care for everyone, whether they are indigent or whether they are self-paying or whether they're covered by insurance. And that's one of the dynamics I think that most people don't have a full appreciation for uh, in terms of what uh, the last five years of BRF management has meant. We've seen an enormous increase in, uh, in traffic, uh, in, in patient flow. Now, uh, the trauma program has doubled and is working to be triple what it was uh, when the program was first accredited. Uh, we have, you know, phenomenal leadership uh, in, in that trauma program. Uh, if you look at a stroke program, which was built from the ground up during uh, University Health's uh, journey, uh, that program has exploded. Everybody knows in this area, uh, if you suspect a family member is having a stroke, you need to get them to University Health because University Health is going to provide the best evidence-based care I had had an aneurysm. I was at work and I was leaving my office and I hit the back door to the parking lot and I was struck with the proverbial worst headache of your life. Had I not been able to go to University Health, I would have had to have gone to Dallas or to New Orleans, which would have been a huge, I mean, a, a, a huge financial and just logistical nightmare for my family because my, my husband works and I have a son who's in school, but they were able to come see me you know, multiple times a day. I had lots of friends and family who were supportive, who were able to visit me. Um, I was in the neurosurgery ICU for three weeks. But my wife uh, was the beneficiary of the level one trauma center uh, about a year ago when she fell and had a compound fracture of her right forearm in both bones. Um, it's a wonderful hospital. Since the BRF took over the management of the two hospitals in 2013, our cash collections for patient care have increased by 68%, from 16 million a month to 28 million a month. We, we get payments from Medicare, Medicaid, and our commercial pay customers. Those have each increased Medicare by 35%, commercial pay by 53% and increased Medicaid payments by 109%. BRF took legal steps to protect these commercial patients that were critical to the hospital's survival. Net income during the period of time we've had it has increased 303% from a loss of 14 million when we took over 
to a $28.6 million gain as of 6-30-18. These numbers are incredible, and they're absolutely the truth. BRF has managed to be able to advance this institution while taking care of about twice as many patients as University Medical Center in New Orleans. And they do so for approximately the same amount of money. In 2018, I sponsored legislation to provide additional funding to bring parity to North Louisiana so that university health and our region could both thrive. Court of public judgment doesn't take place for a couple of years after the events are over. And it will take that long for the dust to settle and for BRF's situation or improvements that made that were made to the hospital to, to become evident to others. And as Auctioner takes over, they're certainly taking over something that was in a lot better shape today than it was than when BRF had to take it over. I think the uh, BRF and certainly I give a lot of credit to our 3,200 employees and certainly also the LSU physicians with, with whom we work hand in hand every day uh, did a masterful job of increasing patient care, patient outcomes and quality. And even though we're not at the end line yet because you never get there in healthcare, the strides we've made have been absolutely monumental. At one time, the governor asked me if, uh, you know, how he would know uh, to trust what was going on in North Louisiana. And if I had it over to do again, I would tell them, just watch how the employees react. Uh, their ability to take on the responsibility to give service to the poor and the uh, disenfranchised uh, with all the threatening circumstances around them, if that doesn't give you hope that we can change anything in this state, nothing will. I think it's an incredible opportunity for the shreveport Bossier community. Just the sheer presence and strength of the Oshner system, they bring all sorts of opportunities. I think that uh, Oshner was pleasantly surprised by how, run, how well run the hospital was based on what they had read in the newspaper. And I think the affiliation with a, with, uh, a medical school in Shreveport uh, could be incredibly uh, positive to them that would allow them to expand their footprint in Louisiana, especially in North Louisiana. And uh, I felt like that they uh, felt like this is, you know, once in a generation opportunity to come up here in North Louisiana and expand their footprint uh, and do good things up here as well. I would like to thank the governor for uh, taking the steps to um, help the employees to continue to reach for their potential. I think this Oshner's um, uh, three-way merger with the state and the LSU and Oshners is the stepping stone for the academic medical center to reach its potential. And that's what we all want here. We want, we want the best for North Louisiana. We want the best for our state. We want the best care for our citizens. And I think this is the way to do it. It's been very satisfying to place a small uh, role in the remarkable success story in the one-on-one -on -one patient outcomes that happen every single day are incredibly important to our community, but we were always focused on the patients and we were always focused on what was best for the North Louisiana community. Thank you, University Health. You saved my life. <laughs>